Einstein was not a theist. He held no belief in personal gods. He rebuked the biblical god. He found that one to be a primitive, childish myth. I admire his genius and resulting eccentricity. Gods are most likely myths, possible ancient alien visitations misinterpreted, and insidiously indoctrinated wishful thinking. Religions have controlled humanity by selling their gods for millennium. No god has ever been proved to exist. Listen to yourself. You have to classify which gods he didn't believe in and then you go on to generalize gods as myths and religion as controlling. What you're really doing is equating all religion with Judaism and its offshoot religions of Islam and Christianity. You can't generalize all religion based on only those three and you can't generalize all definitions of God. Einstein was a theist, a pantheist to be precise. Einstein was a deist not a theist, not that it matters. All gods are myths by the very definition of myth, a person or thing having only an imaginary or unverifiable existence. Religion is controlling by the definition of religion, the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power. A deist separates God from creation, Einstein didn't. The universe was Einstein's God. The universe controls us all. A deist does not separate the God from creation. The deist says that after creation the deity no longer plays an active role. Pantheism is the idea that we are part of the deity, as if we are cells in the God's body. I can't see how either interpretation of deist could apply to Einstein. God certainly wasn't inert for Einstein. God was a continual flow of energy. A creator who doesn't interfere with the universe, by default, must be separate from it. Everything within the universe is simply one continuous field of energy with different densities. E equals mc squared. Energy is the universe, the universe is all, therefore our God is that energy. Our creator, destroyer, master of our fate, everywhere at once, containing all power and knowledge, and what we become one with when we die. Do understand, I am not debating the nature of God. Originally I was merely commenting on Einstein's theological standpoint. Personally, I am an atheist and feel that all those presented on the existence of a deity are human-made constructs within our midst bearing no scientific support. However, as a historian and lover of culture I do enjoy discussing different viewpoints. On the argument I've shown evidence at least that we are only part of a larger context that can logically be called God. It does meet the most common definition and traits. This is the empirical experiment that I've laid out. We have an unknown subject that may exist. I've taken the supposed qualities of that unknown and applied them to a no subject that we can observe. The known object displays the expected traits, therefore, evidence of the unknown existing. Think Higgs boson, same experiment. There is no evidence of the one defining trait that would make all these interaction a god. You would have to demonstrate the larger context had intellect. We have intellect and the intellect we have doesn't really belong to us at all. It is a property and function of the universe. Our intellect is demonstrated as interactions on an electrochemical level between brain cells. Physical and chemical stimuli can alter our minds. These indicate our intellect while functioning within the natural processes of the universe, are contained within us and not belonging to anything external or non-physical. Were we to discover that the Big Bang background radiation functioned in a manner like brain waves, or such, then you would have a case. I would never claim anything as non-physical. All the universe is one energy field with different densities. The energy waves that fill your head resonate through your actions and through your skull. They are in response to other energy waves that have penetrated your skull through skin, eyes, nose and ears. They carry along your nervous system to your brain where they form your thoughts and actions. These words are not yours alone. They are the culmination of the Big Bang itself up until this point. What you describe are chemical reactions. Photons penetrating your eyes, and vibrations on your eardrums. Yet these things are not thought. When I interpret that stimuli, then it becomes thought. When I act on my thoughts they become actions. 
I think to throw a ball, yet the action of throwing is only the result of the thought, not thought itself. How you interpret that stimuli is based on experience and biology. You throw the ball because the universe tells you that's what you do with the ball. You think you are separate from the universe because it's been necessary to think that way. As Einstein said, a human being is part of the whole called bias universe. We experience ourselves, our thoughts and feelings as something separate from the rest. A kind of optical delusion of consciousness. Thought is measurable as the physical chemical reaction in the brain. The brain is within the skull. Unless you have a demonstrable example of chemicals outside the body interacting with brain cells to produce thought. Your position fails. Thoughts don't need a chemical basis, those chemicals are simply resistors and amplifiers of energy. Think artificial intelligence. Show me evidence the brain generates something that goes outside the head on its own and that what it puts out can be interpreted to the original thoughts producing it. Thought is a pattern of energy within the brain. That pattern can be transported and reproduced in others' brains. So we call that an idea. Ideas cross freely from one mind to another through all types of mediums, including this one. Those ideas, if deemed worthy, are then added to a collective knowledge we hold. This collective knowledge outlives us all, and is far more important than any individual human. The true goal of humanity is to become the mind of God. In truth, we are already a part. 